previously on Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Thea slips and falling down 80 feet. I'm going to use my rod of lordly might and I'm going to like slide down it. And you ride that ladder down. Guacamole comes down and picks you up. And you turn back. The hallway begins to undulate. The right turn opens into a large dark room. And you feel like you're being watched back from this room. <sighs> Well, friends, do we really want to uh, enter this dark chamber we can't see into? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't really like the dark room. So, yeah, back to that other hallway. And Laura, you turn to follow your friends, and then you hear... One, one of your friends, friends is, is a traitor. traitor. Which one of you is betraying me? Not again! Nobody's trying to betray you. The Yanti told me one of you is a traitor. Well, there's your problem right there. Johnny, oh, he's, uh, there's some snake guys in there. I see this, and I will dash. So you run into what you now see as this lit room. You came to stop me. It has nothing... Yeah, that's what I said. It has nothing to do... No, that's what I said. <laughs> with this dwarf. I just keep cutting her off. <laughs> you hear her in your mind, and she says... Now, now I must, must ask, ask you to, to hurt, hurt your friend. friend. As you are both walking towards Thea, all the other Yonti begin to crowd around as well. And she says... You must never come back here. Can we take Varam? She looks down to him and she says, Varam is of no use. And she says, stop. And Flint and New Lara, get your minds back. Uh, And she hands you the chains that are around Varam's neck. And you step out into the daylight and you look and you see Francis yell down from his airship and says, Oh boy, you guys done yet? Welcome to Dungeons & Dragons. We are a 5th edition actual play podcast. I am your Dungeon Master, Russ Moore, and with me today, studying very hard, is Amy Moore. Super hard. (laughs) (laughs) Is the new way we greet each other. (laughs) Also with me today is Carla Johnson. Super hard. And Tom Laird. Super hard. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks, guys. Now it doesn't seem so weird. Yeah, now it seems totally normal. <laughs> that totally. seems like we're normal people doing a normal thing. Yeah. This is how human beings function. Yeah. <laughs> may start greeting people in my day-to-day life like this. You know, ring, ring, see moms. Super hard. <laughs> <laughs> see moms out dropping Addy off at school. Hey, Deborah. Super hard. Yeah, guys, this is our this is our winter solstice first parter of hopefully only two-parter episodes. Happy winter solstice to... Wait, that's happy birthday song. Don't that's sing right. that. It's public domain. It's public domain now. It's okay. Oh, no. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Who yeah. owns happy birthday? Well, somebody used to. Some Somebody does. I didn't... When did it switch to public domain? It used to be Sony, I think, and they made like a bajillion dollars off of it, and then... Um, I think it was they like two out, years like, ago or so. Mm, yeah, about that, where it was like, oh, whoops, just kidding, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we're not going to give that money back though no no yeah. interesting well that's good to know okay i don't have to take that one out though nope where you can listen to some great bonus content dm'd by tom laird is on patreon hey, that's hey guys me. we have six patrons now Whoa. Yay. and we Jay are going to dedicate Com- <laughs> stop it <laughs> stop it <laughs> And we randomly dedicate an episode, which I'm going to talk about that oopsie in a second, too, um, to one of our patrons. And that patron today is Cat Waterflame. What a bitch in name. Right? Yeah, that's pretty amazing. That is an amazing name. It makes me think it's a D&D name because it's so rad. It makes me want to immediately make her into an NPC. But yeah, Russ, can you do that? I don't know what level she's at. Like, is uh, Well, she is at the $10 level and has given me a name to which Whoa. I am working on a character for. Oh, this is exciting, guys. In the guys. future. This is, new, fun. this is new uncharted territory for us. Well, I know. Adam took a long freaking time to get me his name, so he's coming up, too. <laughs> it's a Grancis. Classic Adam. No, it wasn't Grancis. <laughs> I will announce the name when they come it up. It wasn't but. Grancis. No, that was of my own Super volition. Disappointed. That was a Russ Moore original. Yeah, it was. 
all the greatest names. Not a real life. name. Uh, so thank you, Kat, for uh, joining the community. She says she really loves the uh, she like binged through our whole th- campaign and then signed up for Patreon right away after that. Oh, that's amazing! It's hour, it's hours yeah. of content. I know that right? is cat. That is shocking and wonderful. It is, but crazy. Yeah, you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> in the nicest way possible. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I just don't want to spend that much time with us, but it is it blows my mind <laughs> that other people do. I can seriously only stand you guys for about like two hours a week. That's fair. We're like those news anchors who act like they're really friends on the air, but then as soon as the cameras are off, are total bitches We're to each other. We're talking like Anchorman when yeah. it's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to punch you in the Boob. <laughs> <laughs> or they're just Matt Lauer. Yeah. They're harassing everyone when the cameras oh, are off. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Back to bringing it, bringing it back to political all the time. Well, that's nothing to do with politics. No it's, no, it's true. Well, I mean, it ties into politics somewhere along the way. That's a logical and, connection that you made. Not me, good sir. All right. Fair enough. Anyways, thank you, Kat. We really appreciate you and your patronage. If you want to join us on Patreon, visit patreon.com slash dumb dragon cast. Uh, the uh, what, what day is it today? It's, it's December 22nd. Uh, so those of you who are patrons of us and were before December 1st should have received your holiday cards, which is of a sweet design that I made myself. Full disclosure, when Russ said it was December 22nd, I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> right. Yeah that's, yeah, that's not how this works. Right, we're in the Sorry. past. It's, talking it's about not even future. December 22nd. It's December 20th. Oh. Because I can, I can read a calendar. Well, it appears that you can't read a calendar. <laughs> I, I was wrong as it is. Um, yeah, so you should have received your holiday cards. If you haven't, I'm very sorry. It's probably my fault. This is past Russ apologizing for future Russ. Um, and uh, one final touch of business. Our next episode, which comes out, I'm going to check the calendar again yeah, just in case I'm wrong. Um, on January 3rd, that one's right, is our one year anniversary episode. Whoa. Which yeah. will have a party uh, 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 giveaways. Depending on how this episode goes. Nudes. <laughs> we'll have none of those well there might be might be a party who knows um but we'll have a cool monster from a listener of uh the dungeons and dragons podcast we're gonna have a cool monster from the dungeons and dragons podcast. from a listener of the dungeons oh. and dragons oh, podcast. you didn't say listener i did say listener I'm going to go roll it back in the tape. Anybody else on? Anybody else? This last that? episode that we recorded uh-huh. has Was a I lot right? of like, no, you were wrong. Damn it. God yeah, damn there's it. a lot of playback and it turns out I'm right all the time. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> suspicious. Suspicious that the guy that does the editing makes it so he's right all the time. Very you know, suspicious. You know what? Anytime you guys want to change that, you just let me know. Nope, it's all you, bud. Yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> Can you put in some cricket chirping sound effects for me? <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> or is that is that not free use or whatever? Uh, I think that's I think that's pod safe. I think okay. I have a, a paid for cricket, so it should be fine. Yeah, so let's play D and D. You guys leveled up last time. Uh, last time we you made it out of the tomb of Diderius. And gained a level. And what did you gain at that level? We'll start with Carla because she is most ready um, that I can see. Nothing too exciting at level 10. Level 11 is going to get real rad. Uh, level 10, though, I got a new type of favored terrain, which I've added coastline to. I already have forest and swamp. Ooh. I basically do nothing with this, but it's, you know. Sometimes I remember it's a thing that exists and (laughs) make it helpful for me. (laughs) Uh, The other major thing I got was uh, hide in plain sight. So I can spend a minute to camouflage myself. And like if I stay still, then I get a plus 10 to dex on stealth checks. Nice. So I can hide. Yeah. I picture it like uh, that creepy makeup that PETA puts on in the Hunger Games game. Yeah. Yeah. So I can basically do that. It is also my history as a cake decorator that gets me these dope skills. Careful. He loses a leg in that book. (laughs) 
spoiler alert for Hunger Games. That's cool. Well, I'll, I'll give you a little uh, little warning that those may come in handy for you, oh. actually. Not just me telling you that to appease your character, but uh, <laughs> that could very well come in handy at some point in the near future. Sweet. How about you, Tom? What's Flint got? Uh, for the, the champion fighter, not a lot really changes. Uh, I did get a second fighting style, and I picked defense, so my AC gets a plus one bonus now. And, uh, yeah, that was really about it. Got some more hit points, so that's cool. What are you up to, 600 oh. hit points now? Just like a, a cash million. Oh, nice, nice. I forgot to update my hit points. Yes. I did all my other stuff, but not that. Yeah, don't forget your hit points. Uh, so yeah, you add your hit points, a hit dice, plus your constitution. Don't forget that. Oh, yes. I did forget that. Flint, what kind of dwarf are you? Are you a hill or a mountain dwarf? I'm a mountain dwarf. Oh, okay. It's a really personal question to ask somebody. I, I just can't just ask remember. someone what kind of dwarf they are. <laughs> well, I can, and I did. I was trying to make a Mean Girls show. Side note, it also does say mountain dwarf on my character sheet. Yeah, that's fair. I, again, I have not looked at your character sheets in a very long time, so... Um, yeah, that's cool. No, just checking. But yeah, the fighter was pretty straightforward. How you doing, uh, Amy? I'm good. Uh, what, what, you, what you updating? I'm updating. I get a new spell in my fifth level spell slot. Very exciting. That's going to be a real powerful one. That's going to be incredible. Yeah, sometimes, though, the really powerful ones, I look at it and I'm like, I'm never going to use that. Um, though there is one where I can literally reanimate or recreate a body for a dead thing and it will live inside this body and inhabit it as a new. It still has all of its old memories, but Jeez. it is now like if Flint died and there was a dead elf that was dead for less than 10 days, I could put Flint's essence into this elf and he would now live as an elf. Whoa. But I'm Jeez. not going to pick that one. That's creepy. Because I'm the one who dies. And so, <laughs> you know, it's like when it's like when Joey's character on Days of Our Life ends up falling down the elevator shaft and going into a coma and the only one who can save him was it's himself. Him. Yeah. It'd be like that. Some good writing. Yeah. So I'm going to choose I don't know how to say this. Gaius? Yeah. Okay, so I can place a magical command on a creature that I can see within range, and I can force it to carry out some service or refrain from some action or course of activity as I decide. Fun. Um, yeah, if the creature can understand Gish. me, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become charmed by me for the duration. Um, and the duration is like 30 days. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. It must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Um, and if it doesn't, it takes 5d10 psychic damage each time it acts in a manner directly countering to my instructions. But no more than once each day. Huh, elves get kind of creepy as they get more powerful. Like it's, right? True, I'm, glad, yeah. I'm glad you're on my team. Yeah. Uh, I can't force it to kill itself, though, because um, that's the spell will end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as soon as anything, um, yeah, puts it, it puts it, you know, puts itself in danger, it stops. So you can't force it to kill itself. No, not in danger. Just if it is a suicidal action. Oh right, it right, says. right. Yeah, so you can't say go I jump can't. off that cliff. Exactly, yeah. or stab yourself through the heart. Yeah. But I can say stop fighting us, so we can kill you. Or you could have a buddy for thirty days. You can. Yeah, just have, have a new friend. Just have a buddy. So yeah, uh, that's um, that's uh, what I got. I also got. The internet tells me it's pronounced Gesh. Gesh. But you can pronounce it however you want. Okay. Um, I'm immune to poison and disease. I cannot be charmed or frightened by elementals or phase. I got some extra hit points. And that's, that's pretty much it. So that's uh, your new character, Thingamadoodles. You guys emerge from the tomb of Diderius. And Grancis is overhead and... He says, uh, hey, hey, guys, it's I've been looking for you and uh, maybe maybe we should uh, probably get out of here because that's probably a good idea. So you guys, uh, he lands in an open area and your horses, which are which are still there, Yay. Um, all get on board. And there is a holding cell for Varam uh, down beneath beneath the surface of the of the airship in the in the hold, I think is what it's called. I'm trying to Rick? remember. Yeah, sure. We'll call it the brig. 
That seems like a good term. It's a ship. It's an like airship. Ship. That it's makes sense. Airship. Next yeah. time I'm going to look up ship terms mm. and have those ready. Um, so uh, he is the there. And it's about. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you guys lock him up down there. Lock him up down there. You got about a two-ish, two-ish day, two and a half day uh, flight back to water deep. Anyone want to play that crazy game with the dice? We were so good at it. <laughs> we probably should. We were so good at it. Is Varam, he is like pretty unhealthy, yes? Uh, yeah, he looks like he's been uh, uh, beaten and tortured quite severely. So he isn't really, at this point, offering up much. Um, after kind of about the first day, he kind of comes to a little bit more. Well, I know that we will probably all need a long rest. So as soon as we get yeah. on the ship, lots of napping is going to happen. Thea will, will meditate in her room for a little bit. Like 20 minutes meditate. and then you're good? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that was me smoking weed. Well, you got a you got a bag that holds fifty pounds of weed, so <laughs> <laughs> it's all she has yeah, in there, guys. My crazy dime bag. <laughs> I think it's funny that in game somehow there has become like, well, not even become. This has been since we originally started playing this game. The like weed thing, when in real life. This is not like something. <laughs> this is I not <laughs> like a part of our day to day at all. This is really funny to me. I don't think I've ever touched a joint. It mm. makes me laugh that it's like I don't know why we decided to put this in game. I don't know for people less equipped to <laughs> to like, talk about drugs. accurately make yeah. jokes about it. Even yeah, <laughs> like, I do. I do feel like an imposter. Like, well, how can I accurately talk gotta, about this? But uh, it know. makes me laugh. Yeah, you're just playing the character. It's fine. You guys rest up uh, for kind of the first day that you're back on the ship. Um, and then you wearily or a little bit more rejuvenated now come up uh, to the deck and Grancis is steering the way. And he says, what uh, what uh, went on down there with you guys? Looks like you got beat up pretty bad there. That's not my voice. Marty, Marty, that's my voice. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. 88 miles an hour. Okay. <clears throat> what happened to you guys? Grant says, can you make some pancakes? Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, okay. There, I got rid of him. And he goes, <laughs> he kind of, he. you see him tap the steering wheel and it straight, it holds straight and he runs downstairs and whips up some pancakes. <laughs> Fantastic. I hate that guy, you guys. That's I hate nice. him. <laughs> I love his voice, though. Not a name. It's like I will reserve judgment until I taste these pancakes. <laughs> you hear from down below. You guys like? You guys like blueberries? Blueberries in there? Love them, yeah. Francis. Sweet. Love them. What are you guys doing? Well, he's whipping you up blueberry pancakes. <laughs> I pull out a deck of cards and ask if anyone would like to play a card. Am I making any pancakes for the dwarf in the cell? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Probably. Okay. Yeah, we should, uh, should we, we should probably, like, chat with him, mm. or at least try to chat with him a bit. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. We could bring him pancakes, kind of. Yeah. You know? Be like, hey, we saved you and gave you pancakes. Tell us what we need to know. And I remember what that is. Uh, which one of us three is he going to Stockholm Syndrome over? Ooh. Uh, well, he's going to like you the most because you got that belt that makes dwarves love you. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah! All right, perfect. So you, uh, you you guys eat your pancakes first, and then go, and then bring pancakes down for Varam. I think so. And then Flint goes in wearing only his belt of <laughs> dwarven <laughs> charm. <laughs> uh, yeah, BT Dubs. These are the best pancakes you've ever had. Oh, and I rolled see, for I'm on board it, with so Grances now. I, I begrudgingly um, accept Grances as one of us, so got, and I'm high, so it's like you guys like the pancakes. Yeah. Best pancakes ever. Oh, the great Grances. Yeah, grabs her twelve. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, well, I'm gonna go uh, take a pan take a pancake to go and go uh, steer the ship. You guys just hang out, you know, Mikasa is su casa. What and place goes, is this? I don't know. Fuck. Lordy, Mikasa is su casa. Gotta make sure we're hitting the eighty-eight miles per hour. 
Uh, so uh, Flint goes in. Let's just hope the Libyans don't show up. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, so Flint goes in uh, only in his belt of dwarven kind with pancakes. <laughs> I can wear all my other clothes and the belt. <laughs> I don't know if you can. I mean, it was the last thing said. I would suggest that maybe uh, Thea and I go in first. He'll probably hate us because we're two of the least charming people because that exist. we <laughs> saved him, but we saved him. I don't know. I'm kind of charming. <laughs> he is very charming. I am not. Ooh. But then certainly, you know, like good cop, bad cop, bad cop, That's bad right. cop, good cop. It's right. He'll be like, oh, God, I have to deal with you. And then and then Flint will come in with this, you know, his dwarfness and his, his dick hanging belt. out. <laughs> his dick hanging out. And he'll be like, finally, someone I can trust. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing screams trust like a naked dwarf. <laughs> right? Oh, God. <laughs> okay, so who's going in first? Uh, we, we can go in together with pancakes, kind of like a... Okay, so hey, you <laughs> you open the door to the brig and you walk in with pancakes and he's uh, he looks like he's sleeping. <clears throat> he wakes up and he's uh, oh who who are you are, are you the three that keep fucking up plans for everybody? You've heard of us. <laughs> You got that kind of familiar look about you. Like, I seen a picture, but the nose is a little bit off in the picture. Well, we did just Ugh. save you. Is that... Are those the plans that we're fucking up? Yeah, what? was death your plan? Because we totally... Was your plan that. torture and then death? Because we oh. definitely messed that up by rescuing your ass. Yeah, no, that was not part of the plan. Uh, no, the plans I was talking about are like the dragon cult plans and, you know... Go on. Uh, well, you know, I don't want to... What do you got there? <laughs> Pancakes. We brought you some food. Mm. Oh, that would be great. I mean, I'm feeling feeling a lot better after being out of them serpenty areas. Uh, Speaking of serpenty areas, this is when Flint walks in. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the naked dwarf? <laughs> I feel so bad for Flint. This is just too. happening. Too. Like, no, too. This doesn't have to happen. Close. You don't have to no, be naked. Let, okay, sorry. I had just had to make a serpenty joke, and yeah, sure. you know, I have to get the first. No, I'm on board. First, it's happening. It, oh, it's, canon. it's happening. Yeah. There's no, Flint is also just a serial nudist. I mean, we've had talks with him about it before, but you know. Well, at one point I was a never nude, but now <laughs> oh I'm my shed God, that. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. I'm full blown in the other direction. Does that happen? It's kind of believable. It's like when someone quits smoking and then they're like the most anti-smoking person that exists. So that's mm -hmm. true. It's like really he, overcorrected. Yeah. He's ripped off those jean I shorts. I steered and... into the skid. <laughs> oh. oh. What? Uh, uh, Varam reaches for the pancakes. Who's holding the pancakes? One of us. Carla, you're the least likable. So okay. you should probably be giving him the pancakes because we I, to be I, on your side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so I give him the pancakes, and he uh, takes them and, and is voraciously eating them, like he hasn't eaten in many, many days. So, Varam, what happened with the auntie? What were they trying to uh, get out of you? Uh, you know, I I don't uh, nothing really. I mean, I, they tried to hold me hostage, and I fed him some line like. Oh, I'll give you all the money in the world. And it didn't really work. Uh, Were they so, asking you uh, about anything specific? Uh, no. No, they didn't seem to know who I was or why I was there. So, I mean, it's fortuitous that you guys showed up. Because I said my people would come for me. And uh, then you guys, you guys came in. And I guess they just kind of rolled with it. Why were you there? Uh, well, I mean... Uh, where are you guys taking me? Why were you there? I, I was... Uh, well... Okay, how, how much do you know? How much do you know? I know it all. Oh, we know stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely know some things. We, we, <laughs> you guys... We are not without information. You guys tell me where you're taking me, and I, I will tell you what I know. 
<laughs> you know, it's weird that you think you can negotiate with us because you're in a cell. And we just saved your life. In the air. So maybe you should just give us some information about what your plans are. I snatched the plate of pancakes back. Oh, he's in the... Oh, okay. What the cult's plans are. Why you were trying to maybe screw over the cult? Uh, make an intimidation check there, Carla. Oh, intimidate Nuara. the fuck out of him, Carla. Do Off. It. I'm going to. Maybe. No, I won't. I don't have a very good bonus for intimidation. <laughs> oh my god, but I rolled a nat 20. He yes, he eat his pants. Yes. He's, he's like, so scared. He he's, looks kind of startled and taken aback by your abruptness, and he says, look, okay, I wasn't I wasn't trying to do anything against the cult, okay? I was... Look, I just... I lost my mask. And I was trying to find it with the divination pool. That's all. How'd you lose then your no mask? Then serpent... Uh, well, I mean, you put it down one day. No. Nope. Seems like a and pretty powerful thing to just lose. You would think. It was stolen. There we go. By someone. And I lost it. And I couldn't find it. And I went to the divination pool to try to find it. And then the then the auntie showed up and they took me prisoner. Did you get to ask the divination pool? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. And? Uh, well... Um... And? The, I mean, it... Okay. The, the cult of the dragon has it. And if I go back, I'm pretty much dead. So... There's my cards. You guys are, you guys, I, I will help you wherever I can, okay? I can't go back there. They will kill me. Is Flint looking a little sad that he didn't need to use his belt slash naked <laughs> form to charm the <laughs> Now, can that man please put some clothes on? It's the reason why he gave all the information uh, to begin with. What's going to happen with the yeah. naked door? <laughs> why is he here? Just, just, I'll tell you anything you want to know. Just make him get He's dressed. the world champion of what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I leave and go get like my actual clothes on. I like that you don't say anything. <laughs> You've said no words. You stand behind <laughs> us, <laughs> naked, and then once we hear what we want to hear, you just turn around and you leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best like interview like strategy. Yeah, ever. it is. Carla it's, thinks she rolled a really good intimidation check totally. the whole time. It's just yeah. in Tom's. I, I got Tom to roll a passive in intimidation check in the in the whisper chat. It's fine. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I I can't go back there, guys. Great. Why don't you tell us something we might need tell to know? Tell us everything you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. What do you got? Well. Um, well, what... Okay, you tell me what you know, and I'll fill in the blanks. You oh. know nothing. Oh, Russ. <laughs> you know we can't remember what happened before the exact interaction that's happening. <laughs> how, how, how close is the dragon cult to raising Tiamat? Um, like, if you put it on a scale of, like, 1 to 10, I mean, they've got a lot of the pieces... Because that's the way you tell time. You didn't use that scale at all. <laughs> what can you tell us about the Dracorn? Oh, you want to know about the horn, do you? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they got the Dracorn at the uh, the Well of the Dragons with uh, just about everything else there. And the Well of the Dragons is... Oh, you guys really don't know what's going on. Okay, good. Let me just fill, in, fill you in here, okay? Now, hold on. I'm going to fill you in. But I need some guarantee that I'm going to be treated with an ounce of respect once I land wherever we land that you still haven't told me where we're landing. We will let you wear clothes. Thank I went and put my clothes on, didn't and I? we just gave you the world's yeah, best man. blueberry pancakes. Like They were. God. They were They were pretty good. I haven't had blueberry pancakes like that since my made me blueberry pancakes. It was super good. Super good. Okay. The Well of the Dragons. It's in... An extinct volcano in the northern end of the Sunset Mountains. Cool. So they've got the Dracorn there, calling dragons from all over the all over the who who, who knows it's, and uh, that's where they got the white mask and any of the other masks and all the worm speakers usually hang out there. Generally speaking. Pause. What's a worm speaker? The guys who wear the masks. 
Why are they called worm speakers? Because worm is a baby dragon. <gasps> oh, guys, new information for me. <laughs> Did you guys know this? Like worm, W Y R M, yeah, yeah. correct? Yeah. Oh. All right. Unpause. Yeah, that's information that I had previously in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something we don't already know. Roll a, roll a persuasion check. What am I persuading? Uh, 17, persuasion, 19. All right, so you guys know a little bit. That's good. <laughs> persuading him not to think we're idiots? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. In your personal opinion, having been a part of this uh, certain organization, mm-hmm. what would you would think- not recommend as a, as a as an employer? Like I would not put them in the top seventy. They kind of uh, they're kind of kind of bitches. Okay, kinda bitches. What 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 would so like a one star Yelp? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's that's what's a Yelp. What would be the uh, the thorn in their craw? What could we do that would really? fuck some shit up for them and disrupt their plans. We do not want Tiamat to rise. Let's just lay the cards out on the table here. That's just going to be bad news for everybody. I don't care who you are. Yeah, no, no. That's uh, Now that I'm not in the inner circle uh, and I probably would be murdered on sight, it's uh, probably best that that doesn't happen. Uh, well, I mean, you, there's there's a couple couple waypoints, a couple organizations helping them out that, uh, that you might want to like shut down uh like the wizards of, of the fey you, you probably want to try and disrupt whatever they got going on because the wizards of fey are the actual ones conducting the the will be conducting the spell uh that will be bringing tiamat aback and you said there was a couple of groups helping them out oh yeah uh you probably could find uh some folks that are still in the inner circle who got a little they're a little Some disgruntled you know, employees. Yeah, they're not so happy with what's going on there. Like they don't want Team to rise, but they're just kind of pushing papers as it, as it were. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could, uh, yeah, you could track. There's a couple guys stationed, or they were last stationed at Zonthal's Tower. Uh, any names? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, the two high-ranking cultists that you're going to find there are in command. You're going to find uh, Nergoth Bladelord and Jorgen Paul uh, and uh, uh, Iskender. Iskender, he's there too. Are these humans? Are these dwarves? Could you give us a brief description? We need to know if Flint needs to be naked again. <laughs> no, no, you keep your clothes on, bud. Ah, oh, I mean, oh, okay. Uh, well, Nergoth, he runs, he kind of runs around. He's uh, with, like, the Demi-Liches. Uh, he's kind of an un, like, an undead kind of guy. He's pretty easy to point out. He's a big, big dude. Looks like a, like his face is falling off all the time. Ugh. It's kind of gross. Um, yeah, but he, he's easy to find. Iskender, he's, uh, he's a human. He's kind of a wizardy guy. And, uh, He's an older fellow, long black hair. Once you get in there, I mean, they have their tower, their quarters and stuff. Nameplates on the door. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy to find. We're very organized in terms of in terms of that sort of thing. And what about old Jorgen? Uh, Jorgen, yeah, he's he's a human as well. But yeah, there. I mean, Nergoth especially, he's kind of part of the old guard. The uh, the Demi Lich is there. And he's unhappy with the way things are going? Uh, well, yeah, he doesn't want Tiamat to come back because Tiamat's one bad, bad bitch. And, uh, and, and he, he's the bad bitch? And he wants to bring the Dracoliches back. Yeah, what's, what's the deal with the Dracoliches? Uh, yeah, the, well, the, the Dracoliches, they, they, they're like, un, they're undead dragons. And they just kind of go around bringing back dead dragons as, as dra- Dracoliches. Ah, so creating an army of undead dragons. Yeah. I mean, he's the kind of guy you want to have on your side. And why are these other guys unhappy? They're in the same boat. You know, they uh, they don't want Tiamat to come back. They want power for themselves. They have kind of feel that Tiamat's playing Severin. And when she comes back, she's just going to wreck all the shit. And no matter where you are in the ranks, clearing the house. Well... If I was Tiamat, that's what I'd do. You guys are dicks. Yep. 
Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Wouldn't have offered you pancakes if we were in the flip situation. Just putting that out there. Uh, but you're not wrong there. What else you got? <laughs> oh, man. It's good for now. Go and have a nap. Yeah, we're, we're going to be bringing you to our peeps in Waterdeep. So if you can, you know, mull over what you've told us today, refine it a little bit, get a little more detail, I bet you're going to be saying it again soon. Yeah, that's cool. It'll probably happen off camera, so that's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. What's a camera? What? <laughs> She's just kind of like awkwardly back out of the room. <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Oh, odds are. Yeah, probably. Uh, just abruptly turn and leave. Uh, we'll be back. Because we probably will. Realistically. Yeah. Uh, yes. It's a great way to exit. All right, if you could whip me up some more of those pancakes, that'd be super nice, too. No? Talk to Grancis about it. All right, just mm. don't let the naked guy bring them back, okay? Oh, he'll bring them. Oh, mm, shit. And he won't be using his hands to hold the plate. Oh, my God. I, that's... <laughs> I don't understand what that means, but... I don't okay. understand what kind of balance we think. <laughs> I I don't know. It just it just nobody knows. Just came nobody out. Nobody knows. But everyone's getting a real weird visual. Flint got an attribute bonus. Uh, <laughs> oh god! So we leave. Yeah. Yes, God, we leave. <laughs> Some awkward interaction. That's our most of them. I know you already said this, Russ, but I guess I want to ask Francis how long until we get where we're going. Still a couple days. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You go back up and you you ask him that, and he said, "Well, you know, we're uh, uh, we've been going for about a day. We got about a day left, so you can just kind of hang out." Uh, uh, I'm never gonna get this voice on the first fucking try. Uh, yeah, yeah, and just kind of kind of chill for a day. It'll be fine. I go down to where the horses are, and I I spend some time with Tiny. You go down, but they're on the deck. I go up to where the horses are, (laughs) and I spend some time with Tiny. And I brush him, and I tell him how pretty he is. Thea was feeling really bad about leaving them, and just glad it all worked out. Kind of play games and rest and uh, find uh, ways to kill the time. Uh, Grancis makes more pancakes for dinner because he knows you guys love him so much. It's a lot of carbs. A lot of carbs. Sorry, oh, it's easy to pack flour <laughs> <laughs> and blueberries. And blueberries, fresh, <laughs> fresh blueberries. Yep. <laughs> it's amazing he just had them. Uh, so you guys uh, finish out your journey, and you. Uh, See up ahead, Grancis yells, "Oh, we're uh, we're just about here!" And oh, oh boy, it doesn't look like it's it's very good down there. Um, but you see, the city of Waterdeep itself looks quite. It looks fine. Like it doesn't look like there's any damage. But uh, the the walls look like they've taken some damage around the city. There's scorched earth all along the outside. Uh, looks like there has been a a recent or many attempts of breaking into Waterdeep. Right now it looks kind of calm, but like much of the other growth and cities that you've seen traveling through Faerun, it is uh, quite disturbed at this point. As you get closer to Waterdeep, uh, two hippogriffs mounted by guards fly up and fly beside the ship and they yell to you and say, What's your business in Waterdeep? We're bringing a prisoner. The guard that was speaking looks to you and says, "Oh, oh, oh! I'm I'm sorry, Nulara, and and Flint and Thea. You, you're per- perfectly welcome to go in, land, and uh, deal with your prisoner as you uh, as you see fit." What happened here? Uh, there's been many attempts to uh, to breach breach into Waterdeep uh, by cultist members and by other groups, um, but we've managed to stave them off so far. Good job. Thank you, thank you. And uh, they uh, escort you into Waterdeep, and Grancis lands the airship down, um, and you are greeted by two other guards bearing insignias of the Harpers, um, and they come up to the ship and say, uh, "Nulara, Thea, Flint, it's uh, it's it, we're happy to have you back. It, the Council uh, has been has been concerned uh, that you might have 
uh, have died in some of the battles that have been going on across Faerun, but it's wonderful to see you back. They'll be fan- it'll be fantastic news. I will uh, take escort you to Leosin. If there's anything else you need, we can sort that out along the way. I grab by the shoulders, I shake him, I say, What year is it? Um, well... <laughs> and then I just laugh and then start to walk away. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we have a... And I, and I lean out the window and go, You there, boy! What day is it today? <laughs> uh, it's a Thursday, sir. You're supposed to tell me it's Christmas Day, Russ. Get with the program. It's, it's, it's not, though. It's not Christmas Day. Christ doesn't exist in this narrative. What? <laughs> it's just some guy down the street. We have a prisoner, a high-level prisoner that needs to be taken somewhere secure. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, bring him. Yeah, bring him. We will escort you and him down to uh, down to the down to the brig, and and then take you to Leosin, and you can you can deal with uh, deal with matters at hand. Great. Do you want some pancakes? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I I'm fine. I just ate. Um, They're really good. Francis yells, "They're the best fucking pancakes you've ever eaten." As well, may, 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 maybe later, maybe later. Um, and you uh, you bring Varam and the the four of you. Francis tags along. Uh, take Varam. Take yep. him to the prison, and uh, you sign him in there with the guards, and he takes you up to go see Leosin. My goodness, it's been so long since we've seen you. We thought we thought the worst. I know it's only been a month and a half, but we thought you'd be back quick after we heard you were back, dropped Makoth back at the Arcane Brotherhood. No, nothing's ever simple with us, Leosin. We follow our hearts. Yeah, yeah. The that, spirit of the adventure. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've gathered that from, dealing, from, from us dealing together. Uh, that's great. We brought Varam the White. He is no longer, uh, let's say affiliated with the cult of the dragon he has a lot of interesting information oh you went right to get for him well that's wonderful news um and you, you said you brought him he's alive he's alive and disgruntled with his former employer wonderful that is great news um we shall have him interrogated and find out what we can get from him the council meets in a few days and they would bid you to join them we can't get them together any quicker than that. So if you need places to stay, we will put you up. But if there's anything anything else you found out, please please try and make note for the council meeting, and I will make sure that they know that you will attend. Uh, yeah, I think we could use a little a little bit of a break. Until then. Right, guys? Of course. Yes. Accommodations would be nice. Yes, yes. We'll get you the finest accommodations where you can rest and, and relax and... Uh, and then we will see you again in a few days. If we need anything from you before then, we will be sure to send someone to call for you. And he uh, he asked the guards uh, to take you uh, to the tower where there are some some sweets that you each have. Um, and as you guys... Like lollipops? Uh, no, rooms. Uh, is there sweets in the sweets, though? There yeah. is a there is a spread of sweets mm. and, yes. and and other baked goods. Uh, in each of your rooms, so you can happy. you can gorge yourself as you see fit. Um, as you are all going into your rooms, you see Grancis also is is going into a room, but he already has a key, um, and he yells down as you guys enter your rooms, and he says, "Hey, uh, ho, oh, um, hey, uh, maybe you know, in a few days, uh, I was just looking at the calendar there down in uh, Leosin's office. It's uh, it's the Winter Solstice celebration. Maybe we could." Uh, you know, if you guys weren't doing anything... Uh, Got be- plans, sorry, and I slam my door. Have dinner at my <laughs> my place. I shoot him a thumbs up. <laughs> Why have you become the Fonz? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving him two thumbs up, this is one. Okay. Hey. I'm going to take that as a solid, solid yes. Okay, I'll see you guys. I'll be there. Great. Looking forward to it. I'm going to oh, I'm gonna do some cooking. It's going to be great. And he skips into his room. He's quite happy. But uh, unless you guys say anything else to each other, you just ghost into your rooms. And I've already left. I'm already in my room. I'm eating sweets. I'm four cupcakes and like marzipan in. Flint and Nulara, you you as well are marzipanning? I am going to like, I'll go into the room, but I don't need or want this room. I'm going to, you know, maybe like get some sweets. 
Of course. Not, I'm not an animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not a monster. <laughs> Clearly one. I'm only the, human. I need the, this week. All the good stuff. Um, but I'm going to like peace out of town as much as I can. Um, I don't know how secure it is like outside the city walls. And honestly, I probably don't really care. Like I want to get to the woods. I want quiet and I want to sure just like have some time to commune with nature a little bit away from everything. You, uh, you try to get out of the city. Um, they have all the gates pretty heavily locked down. And even though you are new Lara, they don't allow you pass. But there is within the city Mount Waterdeep, which is an entire forested area, which you find yourself uh, drawn to. Um, and it's away from the city. And there's an entire cliff face that overlooks the ocean. And you make your way up there. Flint, what are you doing right away? Uh, probably grabbing some sweets and then meandering down to the old Smith and Shop. Sure. See if there's anything I can uh, take a gander at. Sure. Yeah. You. There are uh, within immediate walking distance. There are a couple smitheries, Smith shops. Uh, one called Saren's Fine Swords, and one called Brian the Swords Masters. Uh, let's go check out Saren's shop. You walk into Cern's, and it is your is your standard run of the mill blacksmith. Um, and in there, you uh, immediately see a younger female dwarf who is working on looks like a piece of plate armor. Um, and she looks up at you and says, "What can I do you for?" Thea, what are you doing? Uh, Thea smokes a big bowl of weed in the middle of her bed just in quiet she's meditating at the same time enjoying herself um she's also brought over several plates of the sweets mm-hmm. and is stuffing her face it's just what she's doing right so, now yeah so thea spends a better part of the afternoon partaking in her own supply and uh, uh, and gorging herself on fine sweets. And then what does she do for the rest of the couple days? Oh, for the rest of the couple days, nice and relaxed. Uh, Thea heads down to peruse through the different shops. Is there a feather shop by any chance? Uh, yeah, Madame Mistress's Feathers. Wonderful. Thea would like to go in there and browse around. Of course, you open the the door to the feather shop and you immediately are struck in the face by feathers. Oh, Thea's happy. And they just brush past you and you walk in and you hear a voice from the back say, oh yes, come on in. It's welcome to Madam Mistress's feather shop. What can I do for you? I need your biggest fluffiest, most colorful feathers, please. Oh my golly, we just got a fresh batch of hippogriff feathers in. Let me go get them from the box here. And she runs back and brings out a box of enormous, silky hippogriff feathers. These will do. Oh, how many do you need? All of them. Oh, all, 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 okay. Do you, do you, you, you got some, okay, that's, that will be uh, 50, 50 gold. And I give her the money. Wonderful, wonderful. What are you making with these, these fine feathers? I just smile at her, take my feathers, and walk out. Oh, okay, well, pleasure doing business. You come back anytime. Tell your friends about us. New Lara, you've uh, made camp up on Mount Waterdeep, um, and you're overlooking the ocean, and you see uh, there are plenty of ships coming and going. And what is New Lara doing? Honestly, like, uh, I have a, I have a campfire and like kind of a, a rustic camp, and I'm trying to trap. You know, some some small game to eat. Like, I am used to living rough, and I want to be living rough. So I'm whittling and staring at the fire and kind of just relaxing, but in a very rustic way. There are some things that I look for in the woods to get my gifts ready for my friends. You spend the bulk of your time out there, and on the second day that you're out there, um, you, you've you seen them coming and going, but you notice hippogriff guards kind of converging just a little bit north uh, from where you are. 
And that's kind of caught your attention. How many are there? Probably lots, hey? You, you see them coming and going, but you've seen about about seven or eight different hippogriffs uh, throughout different parts of the day. Are they behaving suspiciously? <laughs> Is that why I noticed no. them? No, no, you just notice that they're all kind of coming and going to uh, the same 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 ish spot from where you've you've plunked yourself down. Well, I guess I'll go say hi. I was thinking you were saying they were far away. No, no, they're on the mountain there. Um, you uh, you work your way through uh, through the forest and you come to about the point where you thought they were they were headed and you see a large airy um, which has brandished the insignia of the city guard of Waterdeep. And as you get closer, you are greeted a little abruptly by two human guards. And they say, Paul, Paul, what are you doing here? I've been camping on the mountain. I saw you coming and going. I guess I just wanted to come take a look at what's going on. See these hippogriffs up a little bit closer. The uh, There is a male and a female, and the male is speaking to you. Uh, the female uh, kind of kicks him um, and gives a, a knowing nod towards you, and he looks again and says, Oh, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, New Lara. Uh, I didn't didn't notice you. I didn't expect uh, didn't expect any 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 of the higher ups to be to be up here. Um, yeah, yeah. Feel free to come look around. This is where we. This is where the hippogriffs. It's where we we stable them, um, and they come and go from here. And what are your names? I'm I'm Philip, uh, and this is uh, Ava. It's nice to meet you. It, it, it's a it's a pleasure to, pleasure to meet you. Um, are 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 your friends around, or is it just you? Uh, just just me, just me. I like to be outdoors more than I like to be indoors. Of course, of course. Yeah, uh, l- let me uh, let me show you show you around. Um, and she ushers you towards the open kind of barn door of this of this airy. Okay, I want to go see the giant animals. You follow. Uh, she ushers you in, and she follows in quickly behind you. Philip stays back, and uh, you walk in, and the. Six of the eight stables have hippogriffs in them, and you walk up to these enormous creatures. Uh, they are slightly bigger than a a horse, um, as you would normally see them, uh, uh, even bigger than tiny. And they have it, one of them opens their wings, and it is an enormous, almost twenty foot span. Um, and the they have the fur of a horse up to like the chest and then it's all covered in eagle feathers up to its face and across its wings and they have giant eagle clawed talons on their front feet and horse hooves on their back they are all a majestic kind of a very bright gray and white and ava says uh um how, how long how long have you have you been been fighting against the cult of the dragon uh it, it feels like forever. This is the first break we've had in months. How about you? Uh, well, I've I've recently joined the city guard. It's only been it's only been uh, a couple months. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean the, the the stories that we've we've heard of you uh, throughout the guard uh, and your friends uh, have been have been quite quite the tales that you've you've gone through. And you know we uh, we would. If, if, you know, if we, uh, hopefully we make it out on the other side, maybe, maybe you wouldn't consider tra- training some of us or, or working with some of us, maybe even joining the guard yourself. I, I, I this might be a little forward of me. Uh, well, maybe, like I said, I, I like to be outdoors more, but it seems like you're working with animals and I, I definitely love that. Let's try and get through stopping the cult. Before we make any plans beyond that, we're still a, a few a few steps away, I think, from being anywhere close to reaching our goal with that. She, uh, her face kind of flushes a little red and she kind of looks to the ground. She says, yes, yes, of course, of course. Uh, priorities first. Ava, how, how close can I get to one of these? They're incredible and I'd love to, I don't know. Would you like to ride one? Oh, uh, oh, uh, 
Is that possible? Of course, of, of course it's possible. I mean, it's it, your new Lara, Thea, and Flint. I mean, who would stop you? And she goes to uh, saddle up a couple of the of the hippogriffs before you say anything else. This is amazing. Have you ever ridden one before? No. You're in, you're in for a treat. She finishes saddling up the hippogriffs, and you mount on top of one. Uh, maybe make an animal handling check. I'm good at that. As you kind of step out. Uh, it's an 18. Ava looks to you and says, you just have to be conf... Oh, uh, it seems you know what you're doing. Okay. Um, well, let's uh, let's take a spin around the bay and, and then uh, come on back. Your hippogriff kind of leads you out um, and you soar out of the airy and down over the trees and glide right along the uh, the surface of the ocean and you spend the better part of a day out flying around on hippogriffs with Ava. It's the best day of my life. It's not even my real life. It's the best day of Carla's life. Never mind new Laura. New Laura. Yeah, you're kind of <laughs> nailing it. Flint, you've just entered Cern's Fine Swords, and you've been greeted by a female, younger-looking female dwarf. And she says, what can I, uh, what can I do you for? I was wondering if I would, uh, be able to convince you to let me use your shop for a few things while I was here in town. Oh, uh, use my shop. Well, it's, it's not exactly my shop. Let me, uh, let me go ask my dad. Uh, and she yells to the back, hey, dad, uh, guy here wants to use the shop. And you hear a grumbled yell from the back. Use the shop. Who's going to use the... F-? And he storms out. And he looks up at you and he says, You think you can use a tool here? Well, I, I have my own tools. I just don't have a shop. So I was wondering if I could, uh, you know, pay a little little gold and maybe use a bit of your supplies and, and make a few things for my friends. Hey, pay me a gold. Okay, you pay me a gold and you show me what you got there, city boy. Let's see what you got going on. All right, what what am I showing him, Russ? <laughs> Make a, you know, uh, you know. You 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 pull your. Hey, me know. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, I, you can show him whatever you want, but uh, <laughs> whenever you want to make a kind of a Smith's tools check, I think you've got a, a proficiency modifier for that. Uh, At least you should. Oh yes, yes I do. That is a twenty-four. So you get to work. Uh, on a and a piece of iron that they've got set there, and he's watching you as you're shaping it and forming it uh, into what are you forming it into? Uh, I'll say a a war hammer. So probably just the head of the hammer. At this so point. you've got a, a solid piece of iron that he's got laid out there, and you begin to work on that, heating it and hammering it, and you kind of catch him out of the corner of your eye, and you hear him say, "Well, oh, oh, oh okay, well." He's got a bit of a smile to him, and he says, "You know what you're doing. Okay, you pay me, you pay me five gold a day for whatever, whatever many days you need. You can use the shop for whatever you want. You just gotta stay out of our way if we got jobs to do. Okay? Uh, sounds great." He says, "Good, good. All right." He says to his daughter, "You just keep an eye on him. Make sure he doesn't walk away with anything. Okay?" And he storms back to the uh, to his office in the back there. And she begins to work on, it looks like she's working on a sheet of plate armor, I think is what I said. If it isn't, I'll change it. Um, <laughs> it is now. <laughs> and says, uh, uh, you, uh, you, you look familiar. Do I, do I know you from somewhere? Uh, geez, I don't know. I've been here before, but not for a while now. Name's Flint. Flint? Flint? Uh, the, the Flint? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. The one who's going around trying to stop the, the cult for the council? Flint? Uh, yep. Guilty as charged. Firebeard. Oh, my goodness. Wow, we're in the in the face of a famous person here, I see. Well, my name's uh, Disa. It's a pleasure to meet you, and she comes over to shake your hand. Nice to meet you, too, Disa. Um, she says, well, what, uh... What, you said you're making some things for your friends here, are you? Yeah, I had a couple, uh, little gifts in mind, so I was gonna... Gonna see if I could rummage through your supplies and see if I could uh, find some fun things for them. Of course, of course. Well, it, anything of ours is yours here. So, uh, as, as, you, as my as my dad said, he gets a little grumbly sometimes. But yeah, five gold a day, and you shall play with what you will. I'm not very good at rhymes, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of endearing, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. but you know. 
It's uh, something we can all work on. Sure, sure. Um, and she gets back to work on the uh, on the plate armor. And you, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to go through the, um, I guess the the supplies. See what they got going on because I have a a few things in mind. So I need some green star metal, some fire brass, and some solarian true steel. He wasn't wasting time while he was standing around oh, naked. He was learning all sorts of stuff, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So you you sort through the the bricks and everything they've got there, and you find the the green star metal and the fire brass just fine. But you don't seem to find any of the Solarian true steel. Uh, Disa, quick question for yeah. you: Do you guys happen to have any Solarian true steel around here? Solarian true steel. Uh, let me take a look in the. Let me take a look down uh, down in the cellar there. Let me see what if I can find for you. How big of a piece do you need? Uh, not very big. Just uh, I don't know. Enough to to make a small something or other with. Okay, I'll go see what I can find. We might have some scraps down there. She goes down uh, back through the back office there. Um, and meanwhile, somebody walks into the front uh, and looks at you and says, uh, Hey, I, uh, I uh, got a job for you here. Oh, sorry. Uh, this isn't my store. Let me go. Let me go get the guy in charge. Isn't yours? Okay. And okay. I, uh, I go over to where Saren came from and, and yell for him. You Do you yell, Dad? <laughs> Dad! <laughs> Papa! And he he comes uh, grumbling out and says, what, what, well, you couldn't handle a little job? Okay, let's see here. What can I do you for? Oh, this, uh, yeah, they, they, yeah, that guy needs some help. Uh, okay, okay. And he goes over, and they're, they're talking, and uh, Disa comes back up with a small piece of Solarian true steel, and she says, uh, well, this is, I think this is the last piece we have. We should have another shipment in soon, but hopefully this does it for you. And it looks to be about the size you need for whatever you're doing. How convenient. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it was meant to be. Uh, thanks, Lisa. Yeah, yeah, of course. Anything else, just give me a holler. Will do. And uh, you you spin around, and uh, the the old man's standing in front of you and says, uh, you want to you wanna earn, earn a couple bucks? Sure, what do you need? This guy needs, uh, he needs a sword whipped up. Uh, I don't really want to do it. Uh, maybe... <laughs> Maybe I'll pay you to do it. You seem to know what you're doing with a hammer. Uh, tell you what, I could use the practice, so I'll just do it for you pro bono. He gives you the specs on uh, on the type of sword and uh, and type of steel that this guy wants this sword made out of, and says, "All right, well, uh, if it's messed up, at least I didn't pay you for it. So yeah, you do what you will." And he walks back into his, his office. His confidence in me is overwhelming. <laughs> his business sense is interesting. As well. I know he's like, I don't want to do this job. Why the fuck do you have this this uh, Smith shop then, Mister? If you don't want to build stuff. What are you doing? Uh, so, what do you uh, uh, do? You set to work on the sword first, or do you set to work on one of your trinkets first? Oh, I'll get the sword done first. I think. You grab the steel that he's looking for, and you set to work. And Disa says, uh, "Well, he he usually he, he's getting older. Uh, doesn't really want to do a lot of work very often anymore. It's interesting that he trusted you. You must have really impressed him. But uh, yeah, well, all right, you you do a good job there. You should probably uh, take over the store then at some point, there, Disa. Yeah, well, that's that's the plan." Hey, he's been, he's been kind of, kind of, we've been having less and less business through since, uh, guy down the, the guy down the street opened up, Brian, the, the sword master. Yeah, I saw that, uh, it sounded pretty flashy. Yeah, he's got, uh, he's got a bigger shop than what we've got here, so he churns things out a little quicker, he's got more people working for him, so they tend to go to him, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a few few diehards who know that uh, you know that my dad Saren he he, uh, he puts in he puts in a good day's work usually, apparently not today, um, and uh, and turns out much better product than what uh, than what Brian has. But uh, he's got bigger. He spends money. I think he I think he's got a deal with some of the some of the military and try and I don't know shut out smaller business. Who knows picked up a little bit since this whole dragon call thing though so yeah we'll see we'll see if the business lasts to the end of the year and uh, i mean i am i am next in line for it so just a stirring indictment well i hope i hope it lasts for you then yeah yeah me too all right well sorry i will uh, i'll let you get back to 
get back to your work there. And she she turns and gets back to working on the piece of armor there. Plot twist. Flint never comes back to the three of us. Every time we check in with him, he's just working at the Smith shop. <laughs> totally. I'm just I'm working for free at the Smith <laughs> shop, trying to turn it around. <laughs> um, Remember that time that, that Flint used to be with us? That was great. Didn't he have like a million hit points? He was he was by far the strongest, so it's it's too bad he's there. His muscles are getting bigger. All that smithing work, but he's just not here to work with us anymore, unfortunately. Uh, so oh, uh, sad. So Flint, you continue working on uh, the sword and uh, following your trinkets and carrying on conversation uh, with Disa for for the rest of the day. Thea, what are you up to stoned and got your feathers? Is there, like, a bead and bauble store by any chance? Right next door. You didn't uh, have to walk far. In yeah. fact, you walked all the way around the city looking for the beads and bauble store, and it was right next door. Uh. So you walk into the beads and bauble oh, store. Fantastic. Betty's beads and baubles. Betty, I'm looking for some beads and baubles. Oh, Betty's not here, dear. It's me, Enid. Enid, I need some beads and baubles. Okay, yeah, just help yourself there. Are you looking for a specific kind or color? Uh, I need some glass beads and baubles. Oh, aren't we a little hoity-toity, fancy pants pants? Okay. And she leads you towards the glass and beads and baubles. I choose some, some, some choice beads and baubles. What you got there? You got some hippogriff feathers and glass beads and baubles. Looks like you're making something real fancy there, doesn't it? Might be. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, I choose, I don't know, like 12 beads and or baubles. Um, well, that'll be, uh, that's all you need, Derry. That's all. Oh, okay, well, that'll just, uh, 12 beads and baubles. Oh, that's, you know, that'll be 10 silvers. I hand her the 10 silvers and I ask her if there is a fur shop anywhere close. Uh, a pelt shop. Yeah, of some kind. yeah. You can go down to the uh, to the first first. No, I'm sorry, leather, leather. Le- I need leather. Oh well, what do you need? You need leather or fur? I dear? need leather. She looks close into your eyes and she says, "Oh, you okay? You sure you need the leather? Okay." Oh, uh, I need leather. You look like the type who needs the leather, dear. She says, "Just a couple blocks down, you'll find uh, old Henry's leathers." Oh, Henry leathers. Oh, Henry leathers. <laughs> Will I also <laughs> find a delicious peanutty chocolate bar? Uh, I, f- I mean, one can hope. You can- I know, right? You could go for an O Henry right about now. Oh, Henry's leathers. <laughs> you have to write it down. <laughs> I'm I'm giving landmarks now. I've got to keep these in in check. Yeah, oh, Henry's leathers. He's got the finest leathers in town. I tip my invisible hat to her, and I leave the store, and I walk over to oh, Henry's uh, leathers. Little cutscene. Enid says, oh, she's stoned off her rocker. (laughs) As the door closes. And you walk into oh, Henry's leathers. Usually I'm like a really... Like, Thea is a functional high. Like, that's just her general sure. kind of... Uh, but not today. Today, she's celebrating. Mm-hmm. Today, she's in the winter solstice spirit. Sure. Um, I I enter with a flourish. I've got my feathers. I've got my baubles. I bust in, like, and I slide in. And there's nobody in there. Okay. <laughs> the wind's out of my sails a little bit. Uh, I start to browse around uh, looking for a... Um, like a deep green, um, thick leather. Uh, you begin to look through all the they've like, like stacks of different hides and leathers and everything that they've got there, um, and you hear a cane um, and kind of an unsteady step come from the back there, and he says, "Oh, oh, oh, a customer. Oh, uh, what what can I do for what can I do for you there, pretty lass?" I understand why they call you Oh Henry. Oh, <laughs> you just said Oh four times. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I am looking for some fine leather mm-hmm. to make. I would like it to be green. To make what? Ma- <laughs> oh, yeah. I made one of those last week. <laughs> I used red instead of green. I need green. Mm. 
Mm. I need it to be thick mm-hmm. and of good quality. Mm. He kind of stares blankly off into the distance. I said thick and good quality. I heard you, my okay. dear. I was just falling asleep. He slowly walks over, like patience trying slowly to one of the larger stacks of of hides, and he's I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, he, you see him trying to lift, and he's like struggling to. I'm gonna need your help, my dear. I think it's in this pile here. It's down below here. Yeah, right, right here. He points you to where it is and gets you to. I I I rummage and and help lift you. Pull it out, and it is the finest, greenest, thickest Ooh. leather you've ever seen. Ooh. Is that what you're looking for? It is exactly what I'm looking for. Do you do any engraving on these? Engraving, yeah. Embossing? I don't know. What do you do with leather? Um, what do, yeah, I do, I do all the leathers. And what you, <laughs> what you said there. super professional. Yep. <laughs> I've been in this business for 87, 80, 17 years. It's not a number. Hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I would like um, three feet of this leather. Mm. And I pass him a piece of paper. Oh. On it is what I would like to have. <laughs> nice bully work. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> really whisked me away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see here on this paper here. What I would like to have embossed or engraved. Whatever happens to leather, I'm not sure. That I lo- think embossed is the right word. That looks yeah, like a I dwarf so and penis. It's not. <laughs> he flips it over. Oh, yeah, it's on no, the back. Yeah, no, those are doodles. This side. Okay. <laughs> this side. <laughs> I would like to have this embossed all over the, of know, course, the, the right side yeah. of the leather. Yeah, you come back tomorrow. I'll have this all done up for you. Um, I, 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 I just got to ask for half now and half when you pick it up, though. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I just need to, you know, two two gold pieces. I hand him two gold pieces, and then I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs> and he slowly. You got it. Oh, Henry. Drags the leather back into his embossing, emblazoning, and doodling area. And, uh, yeah. He is only slightly concerned about what's happening with that piece of leather back there. Uh, Anything else you need, or what is going on with you? Nope, that is that is good for that. But I would also uh, like to go out and find, um, like, where would I find, like, metal tacks? From a metal tack shop. I'd like to go to the metal tack shop. Yeah, you, you're wandering around <laughs> trying to find a tack shop, and you walk into Saren's Fine Swords. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, is that the bell on the door? Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I walk in, and I'm like, good sir, 24 of your fine... Flint? No, good dear. <laughs> I see him, like, wielding a hammer, and, like, he's filthy and sweaty, and I'm like, what? Do you work here? No, I just uh, just getting in some practice. Figured while we were here for a few days, I'd get some smithing in. Hmm. Uh, do I do I place my order with you? Is there? Disa steps forward. She's like, no, no, no. I you can you can deal with me, dear. What what can I do? What can I do for you? I I just need some fine brass tacks made for some leather work that I'm doing. Sure, how big do you need them? Uh, about half inch. Okay. I hold up a sign behind her that says, overcharge her, she's a rube. <laughs> <laughs> says, yeah, okay. Um, how, how many did you need? 24. 24, alright, well, that'll be... Yeah, we can probably have that ready for you tomorrow. We got a couple orders ahead of you, but we can have it for you later tomorrow. I'm in no rush. Uh, Don't trust this guy. He whips it out all the time. Oh, really? (laughs) And I turn and I leave. And then I yell, I'm good for it! She she didn't pay. I yelled, I'm good for it. She says to Flint, does she normally not pay for things? Yeah, she does that. (laughs) I'll I'll pay for her stuff, don't worry about it. Okay, that's fair. Okay. And she, uh, she goes back to work. 
Go back to New Lara landing the hippogriffs into the hippogriffery. The air <laughs> <rig. laughs> I feel like that's not a real word. I don't know. Not only because a hippo- hippogriff isn't a real animal, but hippogriffery is what I have a problem with. <laughs> like, that can't be what it's called. It's an air rig. I liked it. Yeah. Although, beautiful. like, the owl is the owl uh, And, uh... Ava hops off and is leading the hippogriffs back in, and she says, Whew, that was the most fun I've had in... I mean, I, I, you know, there's been cult fighting going on, but that's been the most fun I've had in such a long time. You know, I made friends with a dinosaur a while ago, and I thought that would be the coolest shit I ever did. But this is better. A dinosaur? That was amazing. Holy shit, you guys do crazy things. <laughs> That was incredible. Thank you so... Th- thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you. It's, no. That was amazing. It's my, my pleasure. My pleasure. Anytime you need, you need a hippogriff or anyone to tag along, you just let me, let me know. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks, Ava. Thanks for all your yeah. hard work you're doing, too, to help fight the, help fight the cult. I think we're going to do it. I, I, I have faith. I have, I have faith. Every, every day. Now I'm gonna just go back to my camp. Just, just exhilarated. Sure, yeah. You, uh, you bid your farewell to Ava and Philip, who's still just, just guarding the airy. And, uh, and you head back to your, to your camp. Anything, anything else you, uh, new Lara's doing? Uh, no. I, I spend some time in the woods. I hunt for some small game. I just hang out now. That was that was a lot of excitement and probably enough excitement for me until I have sure. to get back for uh, for the meetings. I guess before before the meeting, I will go back to that sweet. Sure. Eat some more sweets. Yeah. Maybe have a bath. You know, get ready to like be in company again. Of course, yeah. yeah. Donnie, uh, Donnie is with you. He says, uh, "Well, uh, well, that was the best time I think I've had in a long time there." It was the best, Donnie. It was the best thing we've ever done. So good. So good. We should we should do that more often where we just go live in trees and stuff, because that was better than fighting biting dragons. I'm tired of that shit anyways. <laughs> I agree, Donnie. Let's let's get this cult thing wrapped up and get back to doing what we want to do. Yeah. Living yeah. in the woods. Let's do it. And uh you guys spend the rest of the uh, reasonable time in the woods, and then you head back to the uh, to the apartment or or place provided. Uh, Flint, you spent the the kind of the better part of two days trying to get your your stuff arranged and the jobs that Saren has thrown your way, which has been more than one. Um, and you have spent some time talking with Disa, and uh, you feel a bit of a connection to her. After spending, you know, spending two days working side by side with her, putting together all of uh, all of these jobs that you've been doing. And uh, on your on your last day there, Saren comes out and he says, so, you know, I know uh, I know you said uh, pro, uh, you know, pro bono, pro bono, <laughs> free, <laughs> which I took is free. But, you know. He hands you back the ten gold that you handed him, and hands you another ten gold. And he says, "You've you've done some fine work for me there, uh, and uh, I gotta I gotta give you a little bit more." And says, "Thank you, uh, thank you for your for your work here. Give me a little bit of a rest. I've been trying to keep up with that Brian guy, and he's shady business. That guy. Need me to uh, need me to go talk to this Brian guy? Uh, you can go talk. You can talk to anybody you want in the city. I don't know what you I don't know what you tell him." Well, you just, you seem to think you're shady, so I can go talk to him, see what's up. Well, I mean, if you got some time, no rush, because I know you've just kind of gathered from what you've, you've been talking about with Disa and questions he's asked that, you know, what you're, what you're doing. He says, uh, you know, no, no rush, but maybe, maybe next time you're passing through town here, maybe, uh, just stop in and uh, see what's going on in, uh, in his hut and re- you know, maybe report back, you know, see what's going on. I could do that. That'd be great. And he goes back into his office uh, and you finish up the last project you're working on. Um, and Disa says, uh, well, I, uh, it sounds like uh, it sounds like you'll be back. I'll be back. And I throw her the 20 gold. Put that to good use. Thank you. 
Uh, well, I, I, I hope, I hope I see you again. I shoot her a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Oh my God, I cannot get my shit together over here. Okay. She's okay. looking for a meaningful connection. <laughs> Flynn throws a, a bag of money at her and then gives her a thumbs up. <laughs> it's Flynn, more fun when I don't play along we, with us. We, we knew, but we didn't really know until now that Flint will die alone. <laughs> like, now we know. Oh my yeah, god. That's fair. That was really special. Um, and as you uh, uh, flip your thumbs up and leave the... <laughs> oh no, come on. I give oh, her no, like no. an actual goodbye. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you guys, you guys say your goodbyes and as you're leaving, Theo walks in to collect her tax. T-A-C-K. Yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, she's back. She's still high. <laughs> uh, two day. Is it a bender? I don't think it's called a bender. Um, I hand her. I don't know how much these tax cost. I already paid for them. She just hands you the tax. I wait until Flint walks out the door. I watch him. And you guys are staring at each other as he's walking past the window. And he kind of like walks down like as if on an elevator, an escalator. Uh, <laughs> classic. An escalator? Yeah. Or like he's pretending to walk downstairs. Yeah, that too. <laughs> no, he's like gliding. Oh. Yeah. He is sufficiently freaked out. What kind of technology is this? There's trains in this world. There uh, could be escalators. I turn toward her and I say, I know he's already covered it. He's like that. How much do I owe you? Uh, he 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 paid it up. It was it was just a couple gold. It's okay, fine. I'll hide it in his room somewhere. Fair enough. Untoward to have a friend pay for their own solstice gift. Th- yeah, well, no, no, that's that's f- solstice gift. No, you guys, you guys celebrating in in a day or so. We are. Oh, that's that's very nice. Oh, maybe you should come by. Oh, well, maybe maybe I will. Where, yeah, where are you guys? Where are you guys celebrating? Oh, just up, just up, just over um, at the just over and up just, uh, at the Brotherhood. <laughs> at the, the Brotherhood. Um, the castle. Circle of the. Uh, at, the, the at the castle. At the castle. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, should I, Should I just ask for for you or? Uh, yeah, for me, for Flynn, and for you're, Thea. You're, Thea. Yeah. Thea. Okay. Yeah. Did I say for me, for Flint, for Thea? Yeah. Yeah. She kind of uh, says, well, has a little smile and says, okay, well, I'll do that. I think that and some of us would really like to see you there. Hands you your tax and says, well, I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is winter solstice celebration. Yes, it is tomorrow. Yeah. <gasps> I take off my invisible hat and a flourish and back out of the door. And the door closes. She says, where does fucking stone people have ever met? <laughs> Um, and you go back to the leather shop and you walk in and again, there's nobody there. I just yell, Oh, Henry. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Oh, hello. You hear the soft. Cane. I meet him halfway. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Here's your <laughs> embroidered stuff. Two God, more I hope it's not embroidered. Emblazoned, emblazoned, and it's embossed. It's you look at it and it's fine. <laughs> Is it covered in dicks? <laughs> no, no, it's okay. not covered in dicks. All right, I like they had to roll. <laughs> Can you I roll for dicks, please? <laughs> two, two, two more gold, and then we're good. I'll give you one more and a kiss on the cheek. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what kind of response was that? I'm just trying to pay my bills here, lady. I give him three gold pieces, a kiss on the cheek, and I say, happy winter solstice. Happy winter solstice to you, my dear. And I leave. Merry Winter Solstice to you. It's me, your dungeon master and bringer of Winter Solstice joy, Russ Moore. Thank you for joining us for episode 28 of Dungeons & Dragons titled A Winter Solstice Holiday. Pretty on the nose, I know. 
I hope you're enjoying the episode. We all collectively had a blast recording this one and talk about it almost on the daily, how well we feel it went. It is on the longer side, but Winter Solstice is the perfect time to take some downtime and get to know our adventures a little deeper, which is what we were hoping for. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for joining us and sticking with us for the last year. Our next episode will be our one year anniversary episode, and it's been a crazy year that from a podcast side of things has gone better than we ever could have imagined. We launched the podcast, made some great friends with you, our listeners, as well as some of the other amazing podcasts out there that we have mentioned on previous episodes. Make sure you check out our Friends of the Pod page at dumbdragons.com to hear from all of those amazing folks. I think 2018 is not just going to be a great year for Dungeons & Dragons, but a great year just as a whole. And I can't wait to try some new things and continue on this great adventure with you. So again, thank you and Merry Winter Solstice. I mentioned, as usual, off the top of the episode that we are on Patreon, and I may have mentioned that I made an oops with some of the reward levels. I don't know if I went back to that or not. Uh, The episode dedications I originally had at the $5 level, but in my haste, I'd been giving it to everyone. So, I mean, good news for everyone. I've made that small change to the rewards levels to make sure each tier is getting appropriate value for their contribution to the community. If you are already a patron, Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And if you were a patron before December 1st, you should be receiving your Winter Solstice holiday card soon if you haven't received it already. If you joined us after December 1st, up until today, I have still sent you a card. However, it will be to you later because that's how time works. Thank you, though. We appreciate every single one of you. So, if you want to check out our Patreon community, visit patreon.com slash dumbdragoncast. And for as little as a dollar a month, you'll have access to all of the amazing bonus content we have, including episodes and all the other great rewards that we have at the different tiers. Oh, uh, you can also find us on Spotify now, which is pretty exciting. I think when we were recording this, we weren't sure if we were going to be approved or not. So there are some jokes uh, in the blooper reel alluding to the fact that we might not make it in. But we did! And now you can find us on there if you regularly use Spotify. Or if you know someone who does, just let them know that they can find us on there. All of our socials are listed at dumbdragons.com, including Spotify. Or you can find the links to share with your friends and family who may be into us in the description below, along with every other link mentioned today. The next episode will be out January 3rd, 2018, exactly one year from when we first went live with our first two or three episodes, and it will be the wrap-up episode to this one. Not to give away too much in the episode coming up, and it will also kick off our January of giveaways. 2018 gifts for all, or those who follow the directions that we give. I'll come up with a better name, I promise. We want to start the year off with a bang, so make sure you are caught up and keep listening to and following us throughout January to get in on the great giveaways that we've got coming your way. Back to the episode. Let's see if I roll high on Grancis' meal again. He's been doing really well for himself. I'm kind of proud. Hopefully that keeps up. Merry Winter Solstice, and if we don't talk before, all the best to you and yours during the holiday season, and Happy New Year. We'll talk to you again in 2018. And you guys all separately get back to your apartments, and it's the next day. All your trinkets have been wrapped, and you uh, you hear Grancis yell down the hall. He's like, oh boy, dinner's getting ready down here. Are, sorry, banging are on the walls. Are we all in the same room? Are we in separate rooms? No, you're in separate rooms. You're in like a, it's like an apartment style. Mm. Yeah. It's like a hotel. Essentially, <laughs> where they put up their, their traveling guests and mm. stuff. I need a couple of the sweets in my room just in case what Grants is made of shit. Sure. So based on past experiences, it won't be, but I'm still having a really hard time because his, his name is Grancis. <laughs> and that just really rubs me the wrong way. I leave my room, I guess. Get ready to go have dinner. Grancis is, uh, you walk up to his door and he is dressed in his finest top hat and tuxedo tails wow i didn't realize it was this finest fancy. clothes I'd... and he says welcome to my humble abode thea walks out takes one look at grant says turns around goes back in changes into fancier clothes she for sure had a bathrobe on <laughs> that is art imitating life amy <laughs> <laughs> yep um maybe <laughs> i love it it's my favorite look of yours 
Thea does that, and he's patiently waiting by the door. Uh, he was mid bow when you kind of came around the corner, but he held the bow until you came back, and then stands back up and closes the door behind you and comes in and says, "A feast is served." And then there's a knock at the door, and he's he looks around and Flint, Thea, and Nulara are all there, and he's, did did we invite somebody else? Uh, maybe I don't know. That makes it sound like you invited somebody well, else. Well, I don't remember. Who did you invite? I, I can't. Okay, go in the fucking kitchen and get another <laughs> table setting. If we invited somebody else, you gotta tell me. I, I quickly, like, I bustle into the kitchen because I'm wearing fancy stuff. And that's how Thea walks when yeah. she has fancy things on. She bustles. He opens the door and Disa is there and you see them having a brief conversation and Disa enters the room and says uh, 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 hi hi everybody uh, Flint come on in Disa I come out with a big smile on my face and a plate I put a plate an, an extra plate down everybody sits down around the table and Grancis says well it's the uh, it's the I didn't know Disa was coming I've hold on he runs into his back room and you hear some banging and clanging and Th- ripping of things and t- they're just things being torn apart and then he comes out a little bit his hat's a little bit askew, he straightens it up and he says okay well it's gift giving time we do gifts before dinner who goes first oh i do all right thea what do you got um to new lara the Bitchinest bitch that I know, a scabbard, and I hand her a handcrafted by yours truly leather scabbard uh, embossed with protective runes. I'm making all this shit up, you guys. I don't know if that's a thing. The I love it. What I had him emboss on it was protective okay. runes. Well, you should write it down because I, I can't keep up with you. Scab. Oh no. Okay. It's it's up to you, Carla. You need to write this down because it belongs to you. Okay. Okay. So it's like a deep, deep emerald, like for no more of a forest green um, scabbard that attaches onto your belt, or there's a loop that you can wear it as like I don't know, like over the shoulder. I'm not <laughs> like a purse. I don't know. Sure. Um, for flame tongue to go into, and it's embossed with runes uh, as a protective spell uh, that ensures that your sword may never be taken from you without your permission. Ooh. It also has um, brass. It is held together by shiny handcrafted by flint maybe brass tacks <laughs> um and there may or may not be an embossment of a dwarf penis on there we're not sure i didn't look carefully <laughs> it's whatever it, it is whatever carefully. you told him to do i i rolled for it it could have very well been dwarf penises but it wasn't i would have given it to you anyway uh to flint i hand him a feather fan it is delicate. It is it is large. It's comically large. Um, it is um, <laughs> bedazzled at the bottom with um, glass baubles and <laughs> beads. And I just say, you'll thank me later. Uh, and for Grancis, I hand him a... It is a scrawled... N- old notebook um, that is filled with the recipes from uh, my elven clan that I've had for a while but since I've been on the road for so long I have not been doing any cooking and since that seems to be something Grancis is into I hand him that and I say do your worst which is a really weird thing to say <laughs> to give someone a <laughs> gift, but Thea is high right now, so it sounds super appropriate. Uh, th- 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 it's actually thanks. it's actually a really touching gesture. She just gave her like family's recipes to Grancis. He's flipping through it, and he's like, "Oh, well, thank thank you, Thea. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks, Thea." <laughs> Flint throws a thumbs up. <laughs> Flint's like, don't know what I'm going to use this for, but I'm sure it's going to come in handy in battle. Am I right? I can only assume. It won't. It's not It's not for battle. Flint, come on now. 
I, well, I you tip, didn't tell me what it is for. <laughs> I nope. I'm not gonna. I tip my invisible hat. <laughs> People have picked up a lot of affectations in this episode I like it. that we have never had. Before. Well, Thea, invisible hats and thumbs up. It's the winter solstice miracle. Thea's as high, like the highest she's ever been. It's been a very stressful few months for us. So it's true. You know, I just thought I'd let loose a little bit, do a little high shopping. Make some questionable presents. I don't know. I like it. Well, my my present is beautiful, and I love it. And you obviously put a lot of time and effort into it. So thank you. You're welcome. Who's next? Fuck it, I'm next. And he hands everybody a bag. <laughs> Disa included. And you all kind of simultaneously unwrap them. And they are sketched pictures of each individual person standing next to Grancis, including Disa. <laughs> wow. wow. He did that super fast in the back room, you guys. That's impressive. And they are, they are I don't in, know what to say. They are in very nice hand-sculpted metal and wooden frames with very nice ornate beads and jewels and gems put throughout them. They're very beautiful. And, this, and the sketch sketches are like exquisite. Like, they are lifelike. Grancis, is there anything you can't do? Oh, I have stories, but nope. Nope, I don't think there is. Those look great, Grancis. Thank you, Grancis. Oh, anytime. Whoa. Does Disa respond at all? Disa's Disa been says, very quiet. This is, the, I don't know you. Or <laughs> yeah, when. I was going to say, this, <laughs> um, just awkward. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know you Grancis. or when this, this pose would have taken place. But it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm sorry I did not I did not bring any gifts. Um I just I just came hopefully to to partake in the company, but thank you very much, Grancis. Oh no problem. I Maybe. love it when you talk to yourself. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to talk to myself. I know, it's just really not you get lonely sometimes I know, and then it's it's oh, like, God. holy okay, shit. I need to give it. Oh, God. God. Just stop him. <laughs> I, walk, I, I reach into my pocket, one hand in each pocket, and I pull out uh, a handful of oak bark. And I'm like, Thea, hold out your hand. I do it. I'm super so excited. Just, just loosen my hand. I just hand her some oak bark. And then I reach in my other pocket, in my other hand, I give her three nutshells. And just kind of look at her like, huh? <laughs> I, I look, I... <laughs> uh? <laughs> uh, sorry, how many nutshells? Three? Three nutshells. Uh, I, any kind of I, nut specifically? I know you would know this, being the nature buff you are. Uh, d- sure. Let's just mm-hmm. say, like, they're acorn shells. That seems okay. reasonable. Uh... I'm sure you know, because you're so magical, what you can use these for, but um, that that bark, that handful of oak bark, you can use to cast the spell bark skin. And with those three nutshells, you can cast the spell confusion. Thank you so much, Nulara. Only one use each, of course, but those are the components you need to cast those spells. Flint, I, I made this for you. And I and I and I reach into a uh, to another pocket and I pull out a rabbit's foot. Oh, nice! This rabbit's foot will will bring you luck. I mean, that's that's what they're for, right? I mean, so so I've been told in the past. So that with that rabbit's foot, you will get one d four extra roll to use once a day. This is your lucky rabbit's foot. Nice. Uh, I also give uh, Donnie some jerky that I made, but, you know, I've just been feeding that to him. But that was the present that I got for Donnie for winter solstice. Okay, first up, I reach into my whatever the hell I have these presents in, probably a bag. (laughs) I grab a package that looks like it's a uh, just a chef's knife that's all wrapped up, and I give that to Grancis. Oh, this looks, oh, feel the weight on that. Look at that. That's like perfect. And he, 
he runs back into his kitchen. He pulls out, he brings out a carrot and he chops it on the table. He's like, that's perfect action. (laughs) Thank Uh, you. That, my good man, is made from oracalum and it will never need to be sharpened. Well, that doesn't sound like the stone that you were looking for in the thingamajig, but okay, that's good. I like it. Because I added it afterwards. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you were there for two days. It's all good. It's all good. I also thought that, yeah, since we're going to Grant's house, he's probably going to give us something. So I better have something for him. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, To Donnie, I give him a little green star metal dragon claw glove. Oh. Wow, there, but uh, dr- dr- Dragon Star Claw, uh, w- he puts it on. This is pretty. It fits like a glove. Oh! And I know he doesn't use his claws for much, but it will give him a plus one damage bonus. Well, there you Ooh, go. Ooh, and he gets to look like Michael Jackson. Yeah, he does, because yeah, he, he only got one. <laughs> and to New Lara, uh, I just say, eh, why don't you take a closer look at Flame Tongue? And I've replaced the handle of Flame Tongue when she wasn't looking. It's now Good a. Thing you didn't have. The... Right. Sorry. <laughs> it's now a fire brass handle, and it lightens the sword, so she can add plus one to her hit attack, like for her opportunity to hit. Thank you, Flint. That's a, that's incredible. And to Thea, I give her a charm bracelet made from Solarian True Steel. That is. And uh, it has a moon. Is the only charm that is on it is a little moon charm. Well, because, you know, she loves her some uh, moon damage. I forget the name of the spell, but I know it has moon in it. Moonbeam. <laughs> I'm also a druid of the circle of the moon. Oh, even so... better then. Doubled yeah. up on the moon theme. Uh, and Thea, that uh, charm bracelet will give you a chance to re-roll a wisdom save. Ooh. But I guess one per day. Thank you, Flint. I get, I run over and give you a big hug. Hug received. Francis uh, says, "Whoa, it's a good, good winter solstice celebration gift giving if I've ever seen. What's been many, uh, many a year since I had one of these. So it's nice to, nice to have you guys around. Really is. I know we've, we haven't known each other that long, but I appreciate you coming by." And he says, well, let's, uh, let's dig in. And you have a feast of the finest bird that they've, that he's managed to find and <laughs> various like f- roasted vegetables over an open fire. And, uh, and he, uh, he, everybody dishes out and they dig in and, uh, you are all discussing, you know, things that have gone on and telling stories and you all begin to feel a little funny. Uh. And you look to Grancis and he says, oh, oh, hold on. And he goes and looks at his, he comes out with a big, dusty old book and he looks at says, and you, you're looking at him as he's reading in this book, and he's shrinking in size, but so are you. He says, oh, fuck, guys, I don't, I don't, I don't know, oh, no. And you guys shrink down to the size of a thumb, and you are quickly surrounded by two or three dozen tiny, very colorful, frog-like people. And they're screaming, for the sock! For the sock! For the sock! Who are you? Are you good? Not that you're. Oh man. No, no. Okay. I'm still looking through my fifth level slots. Okay. Uh, Does anybody remember what they did last time? For your own Uh, personal gain. (laughs) Was that the weirdest way to to ask that question? Do you want a summary, or do you want me to talk about what happened when we leveled up? I would be happy to do either. Oh of those right, things. you guys leveled up. Let's uh, let's do. Oh shit! Um, and I you don't guys do a shit. Uh, and you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. 
And you guys <laughs> leveled be, up last night. Oh. It's going to be that kind of game. Oh, oh, man, the cops are after you, wow. Carl. Wow. <laughs> we live right down the street from the fire to, or from the fire hall, and that's the first time it's actually coming to... Nope. Second. Oh, second? Don't lie, Russ. It's the cops coming to get Carla because she forgot to do her hit points. Yeah, they're driving from Edmonton. You've got some time. <laughs> Plus, Find they have to catch house. a ferry. Yeah, yeah they'll it's... just miss it too, and yeah. then they'll have to wait till tomorrow. So it's fine. What? Here, let me let me run you through what happened while that siren was going. I rolled a d twenty and was like, "Fuck yeah, I'll add that to my hit points." <laughs> wait, <laughs> that's not how it works. No. That's not it at all. And then I rolled a three and was sad. But then I add what? My constitution? Great. Well, that's better. I feel like I walked all. I think we like. Did I walk all over Tom's thing? Tom, were you Probably done? Finished. No, I was. I was done. In fact, I walked all over your introduction. <laughs> you did. How dare you? <laughs> I'm really offended. Ugh, Tom. My bad. Okay. That's all right. Uh, Russ, quick question for you. Yeah. Uh, I think I have uh, my gifts picked out for everybody. Okay. Uh, but I was curious, are we supposed to, are these like, do they have like stats attached to them or are they just like idle things that we're giving people? It, it, it all depends what you give them. Okay. Um, we can, if you're uncertain, we can determine that after they are gifted. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, as, as like I told Carla, as long as it's not something that breaks the game or is way too powerful, I will allow it and it shall be good. Okay, Otherwise, cool. your, shall be so. your rod of destroy the dragon <laughs> oh, um, man. How did you know? <laughs> actually is just a toy and it uh, falls apart the first time you use it. I'm sorry I called you not likable. That wasn't what I... <laughs> that's that's okay. Me, no, that's canon. Die a little I'm bit. not likable. <laughs> I know. But did, like, the real Carla die a little bit inside because you're like me and very much like being liked? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carla desperately wants to be liked. New Laura could not give a fuck. She likes you guys. But it generally, hmm, doesn't care. Doesn't care at all. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Tom spent the better part of this interaction naked. Yes. That's right. Sorry, Flint. Not yes. Tom. Well, actually, I don't know. Who knows? Oh, we don't have video face. Skype on. No one knows anything about that. Oh, we're on Instagram now. I just remembered. <laughs> Tom, snap a quick pic. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, if, if, uh, sorry, I guess out of character. We can keep interacting on the ship, or we can no, just say, no, I was, I was and about then to wrap we it get up. there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I, I was about well, to wrap I was it. wondering, like, yeah, how much interaction <laughs> no. on the ship are we are we doing? These yeah. can't be the three things Russ wanted us to accomplish in no. this game. <laughs> Make uh, a lot yeah. of dick jokes. Check. <laughs> Eat pancakes. Check. What's a hippogriff? Is it a flying hippopotamus? What? Harry Potter. Come on now. Come on. It's like... It's a flying Harry Potter. No, it's like a griffin and an eagle. It's like... Uh, yeah, it's got the front half of an eagle, the hind half of a horse. Oh, okay. Flint has been just just, just taciturn this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Other than, the, than his exposed penis, he's barely spoken. <laughs> because his nudity spoke volumes. It's true. You know, you're right. It really did. You're right. Also, I've been working on attaching like stats to these gifts I'm going to give you guys. So it's good you guys have been doing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for thanks for taking part there, bud. <laughs> I'm pulling an Amy, studying the spells. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I paused because I thought I heard Addison. Get it. <laughs> I was like. Did. It's, they don't it's, speak Latin in he doesn't know what pro bono is and he files a sexual <laughs> harassment suit against you. Hold please. Up. Oh no. Stop whipping your pro bono out and you'll be fine. Oh god. Once you start you can't I stop. Really it's like can't. a can of Pringles. I <laughs> Amy's lewd sexual comments are like a can of Pringles. 
enjoyable, Once but just too frequent. Chance, way too frequent. <laughs> and it's tough to get your hand all the way in there. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Anyways, I'm back. We should stop talking about whatever we're talking about. What the hell? That needs to stay in, because I think that's the worst thing Tom has ever said. <laughs> <laughs> ever. I agree. I don't right? think I've ever heard him say something so, like, what a- viscerally upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Jesus! I like the rest. Put that headphones on just for yeah, the moment. Like, like, what the fuck is going okay. on? Um, I'm yeah. not the dirty one now. Oh, oh, it's magic! <laughs> Why did you tell us not to sing? And you were literally the one doing. It. Uh, he can't handle fuck, it because he said he that we shouldn't. Needs, and now he who just needs wants Spotify, it. right? Oh goodness! Forget about Spotify. That's not going to last. Anyways, I'll cut that out. He didn't really say it. I guess technically, you I should know. see all the stuff I've been posting to our Facebook page. What you're <laughs> posting stuff to our Facebook page? No. What's, oh, I, I'm worried that you're not going to like what I post. Straight up, that's why I don't post things. You should just post things. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. Anyways. Okay. 